Thank you for listening. Be sure to subscribe to us at iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or YouTube. If you want to get more tales from the video store, be sure to visit our Patreon page. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Doug Wall, Garrett Lane, and Lee Bridges. Tales from the video store is now. Mama, hide the sugar, but not the booger sugar. Garrick Lane! He's useless without his antennae. Lee Bridges! Doug Wall! This is Tales from the Video Store! Clowns and luchadors! You scared of clowns? Uh, Alright, we just watched Three from Hell trailer. Way in your favorite director, Derek. I can't wait. It's going to be another off, movie now. that's bunch full of blood and cussing and a bunch of over-amplified rednecks. Um, it's going to be terrible. Uh, and and they, he blew it five seconds into the trailer when he said, what is that, 60 million to one chances of those guys living? Something, yeah. I watched the end. Oh, yeah. I was subjected to the last 12 minutes of the shots that were slow-mo going through those people. No way they live. And if they do live, they're sipping out of a straw. Rob Zombie, please, God, stop it. Well, but they're from hell. <laughs> See, Satan uh, is keeping them alive, and that's why they seem fun in the trailer, right? And do I, do I, sense, do I sense something that I haven't... I'm, I'm a little bit annoyed, and this may be nitpicking because I'm an ass... Because I fucking hate Rob Zombie. Right. But I saw luchador masks. Uh Uh-huh. Could that have possibly been stolen from one of our favorites? Low Life? I don't know. He's never done luchador before. He does clowns. Right. Yeah, I don't know. Cheater. Fucking A, dude. What a hack. Go fuck yourself. God. It's only, listen, if you want to see it's only me in theater for three days. Yeah, three days. Three from hell. Give it three days. I'll give it three minutes. Rob Zombie, why? Do you, you know what? I will. I'll give you this. I will go see your Groucho Marx movie if you ever get it made. But you know what? You'll never get it made because you make shitty movies. There you go. Are you guys excited for that? No. 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 Good. See? Not even a little bit. Good. See, I'm not completely. No. Off. Yeah. How are we doing this week? Good. Good. Great. Good night. Fantastic. Fantastic. Oh, my wife chiming in right when we start the show. She's going to have to wait. She knows what time it is. <laughs> yep, she knows what time it is. Well, <laughs> well go ahead. Oh, you were She's keep... just calling to see if everything started all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's For sure. That's, that's exactly what she did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Stankin' bitch. <clears throat> Do we watch some movies? I believe we did watch some. That was my best uh, early grace. Yeah, early grace. Okay. And now, not saying much about the best. Uh, who wants to start? With some, I'll tell you what. Let me start again this week. I'm Wait, sorry. This is two fine. weeks in a row, but I like this. Yeah, I, like I like the change up. Let I me. like the Deep Star Nine. I, we watched my son and I watched Deep Star Nine. Deep Star Six. Deep Star Six. Okay. Why did I? Say it's literally Deep written in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> Deep Star Nine. Yep. Why did I write that? Okay. Deep Star Six. Yeah. Saw it. Great. Yeah. We'll get into too many right details because awesome. you got it into them. But did it's River like it? Yes. River. River. It's all about it. Yeah. Yep. He uh, wanted to make sure he finished it. We watched. Started it late, and we were going to actually watch Pet Cemetery after that. And he said. Um, he, he was like, I'm getting tired, Dad. Can we just watch this and or finish this one? And I'm like, yeah. I was like, you want to finish this one? This was about 40 minutes in. He's like, yeah. oh, yeah. So we finished it. It was great. But do you agree, Miguel Ferrer's character, the stupidest character in Harvard oh, history? Oh, well, yeah. I'm not real sure. Like, yeah. He kills almost as many people as the monsters do. He really does. Yeah. He's yeah. an idiot. And I wonder why they had it that way. Because he could have been a... Yeah. He, he could have been a character, like, that you sympathized with. 
You really just hate him. But yeah. you really hate him, and yeah. you really, like, and everybody gave him a hard time the whole time, and you really wanted him to do something cool. And right. at the end, he, he keeps died. getting opportunities, and then it's like, okay, just stop. Now. Yeah, just stop. Just, yeah. just yeah. somebody throw him out. Or yeah. Get him out of the room. You know? So then from there, we watched The Blair Witch Project. Okay. Um, I forgot how good that movie is. Now, when I say good, I don't mean aesthetics. Or, you know, the, the normal art stuff that I tend to like. It is no Phantom Thread. However, originality when that thing came out, when that film came out, was the, ori- the originality of it was great. Like, right. the, the, way that, the, way that they, the way that they, the execution of it was the, fantastic. To me, the marketing was the best part. The, yeah, yeah, the, well, fake, you're the right. fake history yeah. and all that is what really, I think, yeah. made Well, my kids, well, we, they, my, all my kids watched it, and I told them it was going to be a little slow, and there's going to be a lot of cussing, and there was going to be some parts that, you know, might drag for a minute, but just to bear with them, you know, just to bear with us. They were generally scared, and now they went in thinking it was real. They didn't, I gave them, I gave them an hour and a half. So they saw it like the ultimate circumstances. Like, they thought it was a documentary. They thought it was. See, that's false. That's awesome. Yes. Right. Yes. Uh, and then my wife comes in. The girl is literally going down the stairs at the end. And you're seeing, and my, my daughter Peyton's got her blanket up. And she's like, oh my gosh, there's her all hands on the walls. Don't go downstairs. Don't go downstairs. My wife goes, Garrick, have you told them that that's not real? This was in the climax of the movie. Yeah. She's going down the stairs. Mike! 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 And all I hear out of the other room is, did you tell them that that was not real? I'm like, we're in the middle of the, the very end of it. Yep. Wow. Just sent some fun. And yeah. just, just sucked it right out of the room. Like, like, is there... <laughs> she was a superhero who would be fun sucker. Oh, my God. <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> Fucking ruined everything. Everything. Jesus. River looked at me. Right. River missed the whole camera, camera getting phone. knocked down because he looked over at me like he's like, "What are you, you doing, fucking bastard? <laughs> yeah. You lied to me." That's what he said. Yeah. You lied to me. You're missing the movie, son. You lied. Yeah, you said one. this was real. I'm like, did I just sit through this movie for an hour and a half for that to happen? Did that just happen? Yes, I did. One hundred percent. The fun sucker. God, God I'm gonna remember. You know, I'm gonna text her that right now and be like, "We got you a new nickname. You're the fun." I, sucker. I advise against that. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> don't, at least don't tell her I came up with. As your lawyer, I advise against that. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Wow. And then, uh, yeah, uh, I watched. Um, Man, I saw all sorts of other stuff, I, I think. Well, wrap them off. Well, I'm trying, man. I got so many notes this look week, man. I did Look, I did my homework this week. Listen. I started the newsroom. Nobody cares. Um, it's the Aaron Sorkin, film, uh, yeah. Aaron Sorkin show. I like started. Show. Oh, it's great. It's yeah. great. I started I it. Yeah. Still working on Game of Thrones. And, um, yep. And then, of course, oh, Boar. Yeah. I saw it. What did you think? I, was, I, was, okay. I, was, I mean, it's not terrible, but it's you know, yeah. it's it's pretty disgusting. Yeah, you know? oh yeah. Now the the puppet is great when it's oh, the yeah. pit, but when you see it in the distance and it's CGI on you, you know. like at the end after the right. uh, this is a spoiler when the car hits it yeah. and it's trying to get up, mm-hmm. it's like oh my gosh, that's so terrible. But the yeah. when they're just using the head and they're right. doing the yeah they're doing the Jim Henson and shit on oh, it. Oh yeah, yeah. The puppet looked amazing. Yeah, you can tell that's where the money went. Well, definitely where the money <laughs> went. So there you go. That's I mean, what it's I a, saw. It's a killer giant pig movie. Yeah. I, I mean, mean what do you expect? Of yeah. It? Yeah. Uh-huh. Right. And did you not, did did they tell you that it wasn't real? <laughs> you just you mean there's no pig? There is no big pig that big. I don't know, man. I saw some stuff on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that, that's funny. That's yeah, it? yeah, I think so. I think I watched other stuff and I forgot to write it down, but whatever. That's okay. Yep. Go ahead. Okay. So, no, go ahead. All right. I watched. Uh, oh wait, I got. Oh, I'm just joking. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Okay. So, uh, no, we're finishing up the monster. Oh wait, no, here it is, right here. Oh, here we go. <laughs> okay. Those improv classes are paying off. We had spoken about the 2010 
uh, Benicio del Toro, the Wolfman. Right. Right. And neither one of us could really, I couldn't really remember very much about it. Yeah. So I found the 1941, mm -hmm. the Wolfman, and I also found the 2010 version, and I watched them both. Awesome. Um, the 1941, uh, directed by George Wagner, Wagner, mm -hmm. Wagner, yeah. Wagner. I say Wagner. There's a couple of G's in there, mm -hmm. so I'm not really sure pronunciation. Um, it's an hour and ten minutes. Yeah. Black and white. Um, it's a really simple story, you know. Um, not a whole lot to it. You know, and I didn't, I guess I just didn't really realize that there wasn't a whole lot of, like, where the Wolfman actually came from. You know, it's it's not, it's not like a literary villain like Dracula or some some of these other ones that, right. that came from books, came before and then were written in or, or put on film because of that. This was just a story about a dude that turns into a wolf. Yeah. Um, the sets look great, man. I mean, this is, we're talking 80. 80 years ago mm -hmm. and just how good it looked you know but not a whole lot of action really no nah. you know I mean simple story guy comes back to town yeah his brother's dead yeah and uh, then he goes to see these gypsies the world's least English English guy shows yeah. up yeah. Lon Chaney Jr. <laughs> yeah Lon Chaney and, and Bella goes he's a, yep. is also in it yeah. for a few minutes yeah maybe five minutes um you know, before he had to go back to the trailer and hit his heroin. Well, I mean, got to do what you got to do. Right? Exactly. Um, you know, beautifully shot yeah. for, oh, yeah. for the time, for sure. Right. Um, you know, but eh, it was just okay. It's. I mean, those. And we're talking about this later. Like, you have to be a fan of those type of movies. Right. Like I've always said, like the first, the Bella Goes Dracula is not a good movie. No. It's six. It's like sixty-five minutes long. Yeah. This was You're not I think, a fan seven. of Dracula. You're, you're gonna hate it. You're gonna hate it. Yeah. You know, and even I'd say the best of those movies are the two Carlisle Frankenstein movies, Frankenstein right. Bride Frankenstein. But even that, like, you know, you gotta be into it. Yeah. You know, agreed. And uh, <clears throat> well, Rotten Tomatoes <clears throat> gives it ninety four percent. Well, it is. I mean, it, like he said, it's the production class. value, the, the story, and it's also the first. I mean, there's never been a movie like that. Before. There's never no. been a Wolfman in yeah. And it's just. Uh, it's almost like they're making it up as they go. Right. And the guy, actually the most interesting thing, the guy who wrote it, Kurt Siedmock, who was this guy who wrote tons of horror movies. And he was this Jewish dude from Austria who was just like, hey, it was the best thing ever happened to me. Yeah. He's like, if, I, if that guy hadn't happened, he said, I'd still be in Austria making shoes or something. Yeah. He said, I'm over here making movies. Yeah. <laughs> like, he was just, like, that dude, that he, there could be a movie about his life. And uh, he was just, yeah, but I mean, it's a cool movie. If you like old black and white monster movies. Yeah, yeah. there's, I've seen worse. Oh, yeah. Oh and, yeah, and this being kind of the Wolfman, right? You know, I, I wanted to kind of see because I couldn't remember. I know right. I've seen this before, yeah. but it's been something. The best thing in it is Lon Chaney Jr. I mean, he's like, and the thing is, like, he was a blackout drunk. So the only two movies he were good in was good in was as the Wolfman and as Lenny from Mice and Men. Yeah, and that's because that he was that. He, like he, yeah. he woke up and a bunch of horrible shit had happened. You know, <laughs> I mean. The but. 2010 yeah. version, um, directed by Joe Johnston, yeah, Benicio del Toro and Anthony Hopkins, uh, and you know we've spoken before about how much del Toro wanted to pay homage to the original and how much he loved the original and how he wanted to do this right. Yeah, um, Rick Baker is the effects guy on it, and um, the the basic premise is similar, but man pretty quick into it it goes from a really simple kind of story to like there's a ton of stuff going on right. moving parts left and right the character development the storyline is it's way more blown out than I think it really needed to be yeah. maybe um, it's like it's too expansive and like too broad I know Rick Baker said they refused to let him do the transformation because they yeah, it ends. It ends up being CGI, right? And he said, and they, he did not want. There that. were it used to be like like when he did American Werewolf in London, mm -hmm. it was him and John Landis. They planned that out. Mm -hmm. They planned worked on it for years beforehand. He said he, there was like three studio guys between him and Joe Johnson. <laughs> he couldn't even like talk to them. Yeah, and he was that's when he was like, okay, I'm, I'm yeah, 
I got, like, he's like, I don't need money. He's got more money than others. Well, I think that's, you know, and the promise of being able to do that is kind of what got him in there. Right, yeah. And then, you know, halfway in the, it's like, well, we're not doing that. And he's like, well, then what the fuck yeah, exactly. are you doing here? You know? Yeah, and that was, what, that was Benicio's thing. He wanted to be the Wolfman. Like, yeah. He loves it. Like, that's his favorite movie is the 41 Wolfman. Yeah. And it kind of got, you know, first of all, Joe Johnson seems like a super nice dude. The Rocketeer, that's his type of movie, you know. Yeah. This is not his type of movie. Jurassic Park Three. Jurassic Park Three, and um, he's just he's a you know he's a popcorn movie director. Yeah, and this didn't need that. And that's what it has. Yeah, it's too like. I think they just tried too hard to make it a modern movie when it didn't need it. No, you know if they would have just stuck to the basics of the original, they might have had something. Yeah. So it's like a classic, like overthinking it. Yeah, oh, yeah. kind of deal. Yeah, too many cooks, I think. Yeah, just it's so busy, man. Like, yeah. There's just so much going on that the Wolfman, like Benicio becoming the way, it's not even like the main part of the story. Yeah. Oh, there's a whole family the subplot. Shit with his dad and like and it, all this other. It's and just then, then you have the origin of like his dad's connection to it. Yeah. It's just like there's it's too know, much. Yeah, there's way too much. Just, just too much. So, you know, as as much as I wanted it to be good, right? It's not. Yeah. It's just not. Right. Um, if you're a fan of the Wolfman, go watch the 41. It's an hour and ten minutes. Oh yeah, the 2010 is two hours and probably a couple minutes, and it's just simply not worth it. Yeah, just, yeah. and way too much CGI. I mean, everything is CGI just yeah. to death. And I, right. you know, you kind of get like visually. It, t- it takes you out of it's it. It's like I don't care what it looks right. like. You know, they try and detail it and make it look like this crazy way, and. I, it's like it's too much yeah. that I'm just like I don't care. I don't want to look at this. Yeah. They did. They did. A, they did the exact same thing in Bell he- Van Helsing. Oh yeah. I was actually. It uh, was too much. Yeah. It could have been so cool if they would have just gone to a little bit of traditional. I was yeah, that's some what, traditional yeah. uh, animatics and yeah. some traditional effects, oh, yeah. and it would have changed the whole course. Also, of the I think Van. Hel- it's similar to this. There's too much money. Right. Like that, it's not, you don't need a hundred million dollars to make a monster movie. You know, it's like like Aunt Van Helsing. You look at Stephen Summers' early stuff. Even like the first Mummy with Brandon Fraser, there's just like fun to it. Yeah. You know, and this yeah. and some and Van Helsing is it's it's the exact same movie. You just like surgically remove the fun. Yeah. You know, like there's just there's nothing to it. It's just like yeah. you know, take the soul out of exactly. it. Exactly. It's like a modern Corvette. It's just made of fiberglass. Yeah. There's nothing. It's not compared to like a '60s Corvette. It's nothing. It's not the same thing. Yeah. Huh. Um. So yeah, that was my compare contrast on the Wolfman. Movies. Right. Um, and then I, I've been watching for a couple of weeks uh, that is streaming on Amazon Prime, Too Old to Die Young, mm-hmm. the Nicholas Winding Refn 13-hour, 10-part movie, yeah. as he calls it, uh, starring Ma- Miles which, Teller. Which looks like... Jim, uh, is... Jenna Malone, this uh, Nell Tiger Free, John Hawks, mm-hmm. um, Christina Rodlow, and Augusto Agu- Aguilera. Aguilera. Um, and, and he co-wrote and, and directed this Refn did. Um, I love him. Dude, I do too, man. But I hate him yeah. Oh, yeah. equally. I is, it, is it too much uh, Only God Forgives and Not Enough Drive? Yes. Okay, that's kind of what I think. <laughs> well, but it's like this. <laughs> but it's like this. Yeah. Six episodes? Yeah. It's. I, I was like... This is fucking awesome. You have set it up perfectly. I love everything about this. Yeah, there's some quirkiness in it. But then, from episode six, well, from episode seven to the end, it's like another director picked this up and just decided to to do something completely different from what you had laid down in the first episodes. And, And maybe that's what he wanted, but for me watching it, it made it... Um... It, it, it was like a super disappointment. Yeah. You know, it's like... Oh, yeah. Overall, it's still more amazing than disappointing. I'll say that. And because it's cut up into episodes like this, you know, you can just watch an hour and 20-minute episode and, and really enjoy it. Do you think you had given it to another editor, to the whole thing, and pared it down to, like, say, five to six hours? It would just be one of the best things ever? It depends. Yeah. It, it, it could... The right guy, and, it, and if he would budge on what he kind of wanted, right. maybe, then yes. Yeah, because there's certain parts in this that are just fucking amazing. I mean, I'll flat out tell you, you know, and I was texting you guys saying you guys are gonna love this. Yeah, but the overall, yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, it's like. Yeah, that's why I haven't started it. I got a bad. I was like, I, I watched some clips. Well, I had a, I had a bad vibe, yeah. and, and I watched the first episode, yeah. and it's about one story. Yeah. And then I watched the second episode, which is about a completely different thing. Right. And I thought, man, this looks so good. And, you know, the feel of it, the music, everything, the acting, everything is working really well. I don't know where the story's going, but I like it. I'm going to continue. So getting to, like, episode six where you know kind of how everything is going to, well, you, how they connect. You know how they connect. And then from there to just basically just tear it into shreds. And then spit out another four hours of I don't even know what. It, it's really weird, man. It's it's a weird. Sounds like Game of Thrones. It's it's really weird, man. I, that's the best way I can put it because it's yeah. like you're going in a certain direction. I was like, man, this is great. Yeah. I love it. You know, it, some shit is a little bit. Ugh. Yeah. You know, the violence. A lot of it's great. The acting, man. I, I mean, I love all the people that are in this. Right. Are great. But, damn, man. So, you know, I can't really recommend it to anybody because of how the last few episodes go. Because once you invest... Watch the first six and then cut, cut once it Once you invest, like, you know, not eight hours into it, you're going to want to finish it. That was me. And, you know, I watched that seventh episode and I was like, what the fuck, man? What are you doing? Yeah. But I continued, you know, the last episode's 30 minutes long. Yeah. You know, it's just like a wrap-up kind of. Yeah. Is it? Is it? Is it reffing just being like, look at how fucking badass I can make this. Like, you love me, and then I can just rip it up in your face and make you hate me, and then kind of bring it back at the end to make you love me again because I'm that good of a director. I don't know. Can you watch episode five, then one, then eight, then two, probably, and just save the last episode? Maybe. Does it work like that? I don't know. I think it might be a tone. Like I said, not having seen that be a right. tone thing, but I've read interviews of people who worked with him. For a long time, he was trying to produce, produce a, Maniac, a Maniac Comp remake. Yeah. And apparently, him and Larry Cohen could not get it. He's like, but there's jokes in it. And Ruff was like, why? He's like, but there's jokes in the original. Apparently, he had no idea. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know if it's a Danish thing or whatever. It's like, so I think some tones he doesn't really... He's a, he I know he's got a, I don't, he's I know a he's, miserable bastard. Yeah, too. I don't know if it's got, like, he just doesn't understand certain yeah. storytelling tones where it just comes off completely, maybe the opposite of what he wants or what other people want, or I don't know. Yeah. yeah. It's it's something, and like I say, I still recommend it to you guys because I'm telling you, you will see things in that and you will be like, that is fucking Oh, I'm sure. Uh, there's a part with the Yakuza that I was like, Fuck, I just I want me to just see this five minutes because you will fucking love it. Yeah. But damn, man, do you want to sit through seven and a half hours? To exactly. Get to exactly. And what also, I mean? like, there's been, like, because like, the first time I saw, I was at a film festival, and, I, and they were Valhalla Rising. Yeah. I was playing, and as soon as, like, ten minutes in, as soon as the screen turned completely red, and I bought the whole weekend pass, I was like, nope, not in the mood for this. Yeah. Just <laughs> walked into another movie. Yeah. But then I rewatched it, I really liked it. You know, well, I just made the screen turn red. I didn't think it was red. Like the, Have you not ever the image seen it? goes red. And it was like five minutes in the movie, and I was just like, I was at a, a genre movie festival. Yeah, it's like, I'm not in the mood for and that. And I was just like, yeah, it's like, oh, there's this, there's this Australian gangster movie I wanted to see equally. Yeah. And as soon as that happened, I was like, not. It just won out. Yeah. 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 You lost, bud. Yeah. But yeah. So, I, but, but you did like the movie. Oh, no, I, it's, it's, it's the one I have not yeah, seen. It's, it's okay. It's okay. It's not his best movie. You know. His best movie's Drive. His best movie's Drive. I like Pusher. And I like good. And I like Bleeder, too. Yeah. Uh, you know, earlier, I mean, these are... Right. They, these are much earlier. And, and this one, like I say, we, it's... We, we'll get to him. We'll get really into him when we do the block on him. Right. Yeah, I, I mean, like I say... Which is coming up after the Western. Okay. And, and there's a woman in this who might be the most beautiful woman I, that I've ever seen. She is absolutely hypnotic. Yeah. Um, Christina Rodlo is, is just... She's hypnotic in this role. It's perfect. You know, and, and like I say, I, I can't fault any of the acting. It's just fucking yeah. riffing. Yeah. He does stuff. Sometimes yeah. it works, sometimes it doesn't. So, this one, eh, not going to say to rent. Okay, cool. Well, that's it for this uh, <laughs> episode. What a fucking asshole. <laughs> Every fucking time with this guy. Let's go.
listen to your guests. Well, you got some other shit. stuff? No. You want, you want you cut it short there? I do. Do you want Do you want to hear it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead. No, finish it. Bohemian Rhapsody. No. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, Old Man and the Gun. Yes. Okay. Uh, the new uh, Pet Cemetery. Hell fucking no. It was atrocious. Oh, thank goodness he got tired and we watched yep. Deep Star Nine. Yep. yep. Six. So that's five. That's, that's what I want. Six. Whatever. <laughs> deep Star Fuck deep Off. Deep Star. Go fuck yourself. Yeah, right. Deep Star. So that's Star what I want. Right. All right. Well, we know what you did. What did you do? I, I watched a bunch of stuff. I'm going to rattle them off get to the last one. All right. I watched Hands of Steel, which I've never seen oh, before. Oh, that's the one I guess. It is the best Italian Terminator ripoff. Ever! Slash, slash competitive arm wrestling movie ever. Ever! <laughs> it makes no sense. No sense at all. But it just, it's... It, when that guy sacrifices his life at the end, I'm like, oh. Blanco. 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 Yeah. See, I actually, do, I actually really like that. I did There's too. two parts that are, I, that are I, I great. I liked how it ended, too. There's two parts that are great. The, because Blanco's sort of set up to be this badass. He's like the champion arm wrestler. And at the end, he turns out just to be a really solid guy. And there's this, uh... No, there's three parts. Then the head, then the good cyborg fight, uh, this prostitute walks in the hotel who is wearing cellophane Daisy Duke shorts with, like, a thong and on. And they were badass. And then she turns out to be a cyborg. And they have, like, a kung fu fight. And then at the end, John is, Saxon shows up. It's god awful. Oh, yeah. It's like... Yeah. Yeah, it's... Yeah. It's a but. It's I like, wish everybody could see me right now. It's how like slow my moves. It's are. like the Roger Moore James Bond movies where he was just doing a lot of badly executed judo chops. Yeah, it's like that. And uh, but then at the end, John Saxon shows up. You could tell they had him for one day because all his scenes are in a, a, an office. He's talking on the phone till the last five minutes. Then he shows up in a helicopter. So obviously they had, they had one day with the John Saxon. And there is one good line at the end before uh, the good cyborg. Who is Woody Harrelson's dad in Kingpin? Yeah, yeah, he's in all the Fairly Brothers movies. He was in this one Italian exploitation movie, and then like seven Fairly Brothers movies. Uh, he says to John Saxon, "What is it?" He says, "He says you think you can control a man by controlling his mind, but you can't control a man until you control his heart." And I was just like, "Well, that that's the best line in the movie, and the rest of it's just." The badly dubbed was, garbage. It's, yeah. it's very dubbed. Into, that oh, was yeah. the one. That was the one that I couldn't. Yeah. I didn't have my notes. It's on Prime. You'll it never was, see another movie like it. You must watch the, it. Oh, but the scene where You'll he right wrestles it. Blanco and they they got rattlesnakes right, next to the arms. What's it called? Hands, Hands of, of steel. steel. And other than that, I, uh, wait. I'm not done with that. Okay, movie. I'm sorry. Please the, continue. The end is great though. That last line where he's like. Uh, the way they end it, they end it on this very, like, I don't know, it's a very heartfelt yeah. uh, speech about yeah. cyborgs and how, you know, I will never be normal. Yeah. I will never be normal. Anyway. Yeah. It's a, it's terrible, but it's awesome at the same time. I wouldn't say it's terrible. It's very, I was entertained the entire night. Oh, months. I was too. So I would not say it's terrible. Right. It's directed by Sergio Mart- Martino, who directed uh, Torso, which we Torso. reviewed a few months ago. This is not nearly as well made a movie as Torso. Uh, but it's, you know, like there's I a. I wonder why they don't shoot sync sound. It's just quicker. And I like, you have like, you know, like, if there's German investors, they'll have a certain amount of German actors. So, like, the scene in Good and Man the Ugly where Eli Watts talking to his brother as a priest, that guy was German. He was just saying his lines in German and then Eli would say them in English. Mm-hmm. And they're just going to gonna be dubbed in 20 different languages anyway, so it doesn't matter. And do you really think they care if John Saxon flubs a line? They don't. Not in this. Not in this. Like they That's just hands of steel. Hands man. of steel. You must watch Not, hands of steel. Nineteen eighty five. Hands of steel. And uh, I watched the Pet Cemetery remake. Okay. And it is. It's. It's interesting because like they they put more stuff into it in the book, like the Native American mythology, mm-hmm. like how it's like a cur- once you bury something in the cemetery, like Judd waits fifty years, but you have to show, you have to pass it on to someone else. I actually thought that was the instant they actually sh- add that stuff, but everything is so I don't give a shit. Yeah. Like, like, and they try they try to switch stuff up from the original movie and the book in a way that's at the moment I was like I'm witty, yeah. And but it's just like the end is terrible. Oh. Uh, the yeah. last 
45, or 30 minutes. Last well, 30 minutes. Yeah, it, it, okay, the, the, att- the third part, the third yeah. act completely falls apart. Yeah. Uh, but it's, yeah, it's not very good. Was the first one that good? The first I one, fucking love it. The first one's got some really cool stuff. And it's plus it's got, while. it's got, uh, Herman, it's Judd. It's got Herman Munster. Yeah, it's got freaking, yeah, uh, yeah I've, I'm blanked on yeah, his name. Yeah, I am too. But anyway, uh, yeah, he's amazing in the first one. And the first one's got cool Fred, stuff in it. Fred Gwynn. Fred Gwynn. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he yeah. He was awesome. Yeah, he was awesome. And John Lithgow's good. But Yeah. He's the best thing in the movie, obviously. And uh but yeah, like if it comes on Prime or something, you're a huge Stephen King fan. Or it comes on Netflix, but don't pay to see it. John Lithgow will never be better than he was in Brian De Palma's Raising Cane. Yeah, he's good in Raising Cane. He was really good in Dexter also. Yeah. Oh yes. That went to me. I was like, "Damn, son of a bitch!" And uh, other things I watched uh, the other day. My girlfriend watched, uh, showed me a comedy she never, I'd never seen, and she showed, I showed her one she'd never seen. So we watched Why Him for 2016 with uh, James Franco and Brian Cranston. It's basically the reverse of oh, Meet yeah, the man. Parents. Oh yeah, it's just it's Meet the Parents in reverse. The best thing about it is Keegan Michael Key from Key and Peele as uh, James Franco's uh, butler who attacks him randomly throughout the day to keep him sharp. <laughs> and uh, you want to see James Franco fall into a tank full of moose piss? This is your this is the movie for you because that one hundred percent happens. And uh, I mean, it's a it's like a goofy sort of gross out comedy. But I mean, I laughed. Yeah. You know, and I showed her Young Frankenstein, which compared to talking about uh, the Wolfman, it's like it Young know, Frankenstein's so well made it looks like it was made in the thirties. Yes, it really does. It's awesome. It's I, I won't say it's the funniest movie ever made. It's probably the most well made comedy. Because that is just, it's perfect. Visually, it's perfect. Mm-hmm. And uh, but the last thing I saw was uh, Crawl, new release. Okay. And uh, not in 4DX. Because Unfortunately. that did not happen. Yeah. But it was the best movie theater experience I've had in a long time. Really? Yeah. Just, it's not good? It's, it's, listen, there's people trapped in a house with alligators. So it's that movie. Yeah. And most of the time, they're in the crawl space under the house. And they're like, as it's flooding, they're having to like swim around and, you know, they have to like sort of use block stuff to block the alligators, and and there, there's a uh, one of the funniest scenes is you see a guy. There's a across from the house. There's a, a gas station, and they're, like their water's like four feet high. So you see these sort of uh, meth head Floridians robbing. They're pulling the ATM machine out of the gas station, and they put it in this boat. And as they're trying to get stuff, you. See, they are like walking towards the house. You see the girl in the boat, and you just see an alligator belly flop onto it and just pull this girl, but it's so far away, it's funny. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not like she's kicking at it stuff, and you just so so you get drug underwater. They're not even paying it because of the rain. It's like, you know, it's a Category 5 hur- hurricane. But, dude, excellently well made movie. A- Alexander John, the director of the Hills Have Eyes remake and High Tension, the French horror, he'll get another movie, a big movie after this. Nice. Because it made his budget back this weekend. I mean, it made twelve million. It cost thirteen. So by next Friday, it'll be in profit. You know. I mean, I want to go see it. Yeah, it's. I mean, like I said, it's Barry Pepper and this girl versus a bunch of alligators. There's nothing else to it. Right. And uh, yeah, great use of the song "See You Later, Alligator" from the '30s. I'll say that. <laughs> Best use of that ever. <laughs> well, nice. Yeah, and yeah. All right, good. Did, I'm glad, I'm glad. did your girlfriend like it? Yeah. Oh yeah. We everybody like. It. Yeah. Like you, you could hear like people were sh- like reacting to the yeah. thing. Like, oh, like somebody would get bit. Like you see these cops get ripped to pieces. And so like, it's not like silly, or you're just like, God, there's why a couple are they of doing this. Like, well, I mean, they're, once they're in the house and you know the flood the lockdown, there's houses. nothing they can do. Yeah, I got you. You know, like you hear the you hear the levee break alarm, and just they're there. And uh, damn. But yeah, I like you know it's it's one of the best and. Animal attack movies I've seen in a long time. Good, yeah, cool. I like I love the premise when you first showed us this trailer some t- a couple months ago. Yeah, but I've been kind of worried. You know, I'm like, well, yeah. and what are they going to do? Is it going to live up to it? And I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, I enjoyed it. See you later, alligator. After a while, after a crocodile. See you later, alligator. Sweet. And after a while, crocodile. That song? Yeah. yeah. Oh, sweet. But that, I must no, that's say. fucking the other one. You <laughs> fucking moron. God damn. All right. Well, speaking, speaking of monsters, damn! Damn! Ah! 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 Damn! Damn! Was that good? No. It's <laughs> really great. Yeah. Pat yourself on the back. Okay. Oh. Pat yourself in the face. 
All right, so uh, that brings us to our movie. Way in, Doug. 1953's Black and White Them. Yep. It's an absolute classic. It is an absolute classic. Um, what do you want? You want me to tell you? I want you to tell me the truth. Tell me the truth. No. Did you order the code red? You're goddamn right I did. I, look, I like this movie. I wasn't I sure. Too. I wasn't sure if I would like it. You know, it starts off a, a little girl's wandering around in the desert, and these cops find her, and they can't figure out what's going on because she's not talking. And they find like an RV and an abandoned car, and there's a massive hole been ripped out of the RV, and there's a bunch of sugar laying around. Give me some sugar. Give me some sugar. Um, you know, from there it it grows into a you know, a, a very, like, Godzilla kind of like movie, you know, where it's like, it's a man-made thing. It's like, you know, these things are here because we've been messing with nuclear weapons and testing and, and all that, and that's what spawned these beasts. But all in all, man, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it for a 70, 70-year-old movie. Man, it looks great. It has one of the things that when you, when you put it in a movie, it makes it automatically a good movie. Which is a gratuitous amount of flamethrowers. I was going to say flamethrowers, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. And I, I told Garrett before we started the cast, man, that when they got into the the nest mm-hmm. and they're walking around and you can hear you can hear the ants, it reminded me of aliens. Yeah. Big time. Oh, when James Whitmore's in the tunnel at the end with the flamethrower, yeah. I was like, that's from Alien. It's fucking that's Alien. That's like Tom Sizemore and Alien. Yes. That's exactly the feeling I got watching yeah. it, man, which was cool. Yeah. You know, consider, like, man, they, maybe they did steal a little something from yeah. this movie. Uh, and even the sound of the ants, to me, it, I was telling, it sounded like like the radar that they're walking around with. You know, it, looking for the aliens in Alien. Yeah. Sounded like the ants from them. Right. You know, their, their noises they made. And I, I just, I put that together towards the end of the movie. I was like, man, that's an odd connection. I wonder if you guys will feel the same way and I guess you yeah. did um, but yeah man big ass ants yeah let's kill them what'd you think Gary I like it a lot okay uh, I think where Lee's going with it is you have to like those kind of movies right yeah um, you, yeah you can't you can't show this to a kid and be like expect them to like it as much as the Avengers right that's just not realistic mm-hmm. it's not realistic but I I Looking back, when it was made, 1953, the ants, the, I appreciate the animatics, uh, the effects of the ants. I appreciate the story. And it did one It did one thing that you never, ever, ever see. Ever. And I, this is going to ruin anybody that hasn't seen this. It's going to ruin it. But the, the main dude dies, right. saving everyone. And that... You don't see that, that made it. It made the movie. You don't. It. This is 1953, and they did that. That's they don't do that now. It was weird. They didn't even really make a big deal out of it. Yeah. It was just like, yeah, he's dead. All right, well, on to the next thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah well, they were trying to save the world. Yeah, nobody like, really ever speaks on yeah. it again. But you know, it wasn't lost on me that the the guy you'd been following basically the whole time died. Yeah. Right. D- died, and uh, that to me, uh, you know, that happens five minutes into the before the end of the movie, and I'm like. That just made the movie. If I yeah. did, if I didn't like this movie, or if I had a hard time going back to 1953 after seeing everything I've seen from Avenger, like you say, from the Avenger movies to, to fake alligators right. in crawl spaces. Now we've got sugar in tunnels in Los Angeles, or we've got ants yeah. and sugar in tunnels in Los Angeles that are completely different, and and it doesn't make any sense. Yet I still liked it. Mm-hmm. I still liked it. I I liked it a lot. It was um, I, it was it was perfect. Yeah. Uh, it was a perfect movie. Now, if you say, hey, um, if somebody said, here's crawl, and here uh, before we do this podcast, before we ever 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 got this name thrown across the uh, counter at the uh, video store, somebody says, hey, you want to watch crawl? Or you want to watch them? I'm going to say crawl all day long, just because. That's yeah. That's what I'm gonna. That's what right. I want to see. And that's who I am, and that's that's how it is. Yeah. But I'm glad that I got to see this movie, right. and 
Next to the other two movies that we did in this block, it's by far the the top. Or my my it's top. It's the pick. best movie yeah. of the three. For oh sure. yeah, for sure. It's, Absolutely. And, uh, I think it's something I thought was kind of interesting because having watched, you know, James Whitmore, he's most people know as the old guy from the Shawshank Redemption who was the librarian. Yeah. But it's kind of weird that he plays the sheriff and James Arness. Uh, the sheriff of Gunsmoke plays the FBI agent. You'd almost think they would switch them because James yeah. Arnest is such a big dude. Big dude, yeah. You know, and he's just playing this sort of, not nerdy, but, you know, he's an FBI agent, so everybody kind of treats him sort of like he's a fancy guy. Right. You know, they're like, oh, I thought you guys had solved this one, you know, by lunch with the FBI. <laughs> he's like, working on it. You know? <laughs> just, well, that's uh, that's yeah. kind of how the thought was, I guess, back then. You know? Yeah. I mean, these guys are, they're super smart. We're right. Idiots, yeah. And, but yeah, really well-made movie. I mean, for not, I mean, you, you look at the ants, they they don't, I mean, they look extremely fake. I mean. Yeah, but they're, they're you know, they're all, they're 100% practical in the shot. You know, the only shot that doesn't really work is at the end with the ones with wings. I don't think that one. That, it's weird though. Yeah. The rest of them, I think, actually work great. Like the tension that like we were talking about when they're in the tunnels in, in the L.A. River. You know, I thought that was, that end's excellently well done. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like I said, lots of flamethrowers. You know, a lot of exposition, a lot of what is an ant? You know, and like a guy with a slideshow going, well, an ant is a bug. You know, so there's a lot of, you know, <laughs> there's lot, I don't know if your kids would sit with the exposition. No, you know, no way. My, I would never. No. Right. Because you watch older movies, there's a lot of explaining things happening. Right. Like, there were moments where I wanted to just be like, I know what an ant is. Yeah. Like, All right, <laughs> just let's move forward and see what. Well, but I like listening to, the, you know, they can, they're, they're, they can carry ten times their weight. Right. Or fight. That was the interesting. The forty-eight hour you fight. Know, how yeah. they? They? Dear how they? Lord, I can't fight for thirty seconds. Yeah. They, you know, have wars with other ant factions like people do. Like yeah. nobody, no other species on Earth does that. It's us and ants. It's fucking interesting. Yeah, man. it is. You know, and it's the, also it's like this was the pinnacle of like studio filmmaking. Yeah, like this was a very professionally well made. This is one that. Yeah. I'm going to throw it into the ring of I could see this being remade yeah. and I could see it being done in a really cool manner and I could also see somebody right. completely you would have to have a cool filmmaker right I like a young guy but I think it could be done oh yeah you know I'm honestly surprised it hasn't been yeah you know I'm like last week's uh, film which should be remade just because people haven't known about it. this was so well known the poster's so right. you know, iconic I'm yeah. surprised someone hasn't you know like Columbia Pictures or whoever Hasn't, you know, Warner Brothers, excuse me, Warner Brothers, hasn't, you know, tried to remake this. And maybe they will. They might, yeah. We'll see. If they're listening, and you know they are. (laughs) Damn sure they are. (laughs) But yeah, yeah. If you've never seen it, you like old monster movies, rent. Yeah, for for sure. sure. Yeah. $2.99 on Amazon. Yeah, black and white doesn't bother you. You like stuff from the 50s, 60s, whatever. This is definitely a must see. A must see. Yeah. Like I was talking about last week, like how quaint us felt. Like, had it been made, like, a year after them, it would have been, you know... If it was black and white yeah. and maybe had a little bit different yeah. couple of things, I, yeah, it could be in the same breath as a movie like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Cool ass movie. Oh, yeah. I thought. Well, okay then. So, Lee, you got us a movie? I do. I know it's a little known horror movie. I think it was produced by uh, Mel Gibson's company, Icon Pictures. Okay. You know, and it's, uh, and it is also, oddly enough, from, I think, the director of the first Project Greenlight movie. Uh, This is the movie he made out there. It's called Infestation. It is this sort of wasp nest type spaceship crash lands, and these bug aliens take over L.A. And not only that, they when they bite people, like the people sort of grow an insect inside them and become almost like drones. But it's oddly funny. Like it has a it has a very weird tone to it. Infestation. Infestation. Yeah. Like a guy, you know, and it, it starts. It just it starts like that. Guy wakes up. And it's post the invasion. He wakes up. And he's already been like wrapped up in a web. You know, it just start gets from the ground running. Right. You know, and a lot of practical effects too. The CGI effects, you know, like talking about bore, but a lot there's a lot of practical effects. Nice. In it. And that's what I appreciated about it. But, you know. Yeah. It has the great Ray Wise uh, character. <laughs> he plays sort of a non-nonsense type guy. And, yeah. Just simple you know, uh, horror comedy about giant killer bugs. I love it. Yep. You could read it on YouTube uh, or Amazon Prime for two ninety nine. There you go. Yeah, Fixed Ray Wise is yeah. in it. Nice. 
That's awesome. Brooke Nevin. Well, she, she's been in something before. I don't think I've ever seen it. Infestation. Fantastic. Well, uh, my uh, showdown has been doing pretty well. The old uh, He-Man showdown is yeah. doing well. Trap Jaw is way ahead of Ram ja- what, Ram Man? Ram Man. Then uh, Man at Arms uh, presently is uh, over uh, Zodak. And then we also have uh, Merman, who just got completely stomped. Nobody likes Man. Merman. Yeah. I, I, I've got one more going up tomorrow to to fill out the semifinals, uh, but uh, we're going to put up a new showdown, um, a quick showdown with all these different you know monster movies we've been doing. Uh, I don't know if anybody's seen Boars, but if you wanted to do, if you wanted to do it, if you had a choice, if you had to make a movie, somebody says here's two million dollars, we'll let you make a movie, but you have to put. A boar in it or an alligator in it? Which one are you going to do? Hmm. Interesting. We shall see how many filmmakers out there on our uh, Facebook page would decide which animal. Here's two. Uh, here's, here's 20 million bucks. Make a movie. 20 million all of a sudden? Uh, yeah, well two, million, well, two million wouldn't buy an alligator. Uh, I'm sure your boar animal. was made with less than two million. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> So there you go. Well, I'll put it out there, and I'll I'll come up with a determination number. Uh, I'll come up with a term. fifty million, maybe fifty. No, fifty 20. million. You keep going up. What are you what, doing? What, what's You're like on? a reverse Rain Man. <laughs> You're doing it backwards. Eight, you know? million, eight million, an eight million dollar budget. But here's the kicker: you have to put alligators or pigs in it. Which one are you gonna do? Pigs. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because they've done alligators uh, to death. Yeah. Oh, maybe so. Yeah, well, that's, I would definitely go pigs or boars or yeah, wild, wild piggies. Let's see how that turns out then on the uh, Facebook page. It'll be up. Uh, well, we do. I, I've got some news. Um, and it's 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 tooting my own horn and tooting Lee's horn. But over the weekend, oh, you toot my horn. Don't you, <laughs> you, don't toot you my dare horn, toot buddy. my horn. <laughs> over the weekend, we uh, at a uh, at a film festival in Roswell, Georgia. Uh, I was awarded Best Cinephotography for my film, Ella. Um, which What's was, cinephotography? Cinematography. Is, okay. <laughs> Did I really say cinematography? Uh, Cine- cinematography. I'm sure there was an F or a PH I, in there. For I sure. won for Best Camera Work. Nice. Uh, uh, right. For Ella. Well deserved. Uh, and it was, uh, that we shot that thing in the middle of the summer. Man, it was hot, and the lenses were fogging up like it was. The cameras were getting hot, like everything that could go wrong went went wrong. Uh, we were rushed, and it's and I didn't like the edit of the film, so I'm like, I don't know how well it's going to do with film festivals because of the edit. And so for for this to come out, and for I guess for and I the sound this is probably going to sound a little bit trite, but for this to come out and for me to get this award for cinematography is kind of a, a justice right. to to what right. we thought could have. We've made so to your Lee, Lee, yes, Lee, Lee, Lee and I have made so many films. Some some have not come out. Some and all of them have been compromised. Right, every one that we've ever done has been compromised, including this one. So for for me to get this award. It is kind of the silver lining on 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 a project where we were really sure at the end that we had done something pretty good, and then we watched the cut and we're like, oh no! And then it, for that to still happen, it was it's it's you know it gives me a little bit of positive going forward that that, that things maybe have turned the corner. Right. On. I have two things to say. One, if you're planning on shooting a movie in Alabama in the summertime, don't. Second of all, the amount of just things we had to deal with not only with the time and the whatever but just like the weather like it would just like these pop-up thunderstorms would come in like in no time and we're sitting there under this tent (laughs) trying to hold it together in like a monsoon and it turned out looking so great because it very well could not have oh yeah equipment could have got ruined like a lot of things could have went wrong but you did a really great job with with the with the time and the resources you had at hand. The, the best part, the best best part of that was the one where we're shooting, we're shooting these guys, and they're, we're, we're shooting horses, no doubt, which yeah. we'll talk about next week when we get into the westerns of production with horses and everything else. When my buddy Clint shows up uh, via Facebook and tells us about the film he was in, but anyway, 
we're filming these guys and the all the the scene is like one of the biggest shots supposed to be one of the big epic shots they've captured the the good people they've captured the girl and they're taking her back and they're supposed to just go from horses from here to here and it's this big scope right and we've got to get it because these clouds are they're black and they're gray and it's like the perfect scene however I keep looking, I've got the camera set here, and we're filming this way, and I keep looking back, and you see the, you see the wall of water. You can see the rain. You yeah. see the wall of rain coming, and I'm like, action, and they would shoot it, and then we'd be like, I need to do it, we got to do it again, we have to do it again. They'd go back, and I'd look back, and it was just getting closer and closer, I'm like, come on, come on, come on, all my camera gear's out there, everybody's out there, and literally, after the second take... I turned around and I said, go! People started grabbing stuff. By the time we got under the tent, the tent was gone. Yeah. Like, it went... It ceased to exist. Everything was gone. Yeah. It was just like that. And I, that was... So, what I thought when she sent me that... When she sent me the certificate that I had won it, I'm like, yes! And that was the first thing that came to mind. Is that shot... Yeah. That shot had to be one of the biggest shots oh, yeah. of the movie. And we got it. And we got it with seconds... <laughs> That's Seconds an awesome. Yeah. Before disaster. That's an so, awesome story. Anyway, and All how right. people live in that humidity, I don't know. Get in your car and move somewhere else. Hey, it's unreal. Speaking of Alabama, right? Don't put meth in the toilets. You know, because it'll get to the gators. It's right. going to get to the gators yeah, and re- make meth gators. <laughs> yeah, they released the. I guess the governor or maybe somebody from the Wildlife Bureau in Alabama was like, please don't flush your meth down the toilet. It all ends up in the waterway and we'll have gators on meth. So I guess Alabama sees how well Florida's doing in the news and they're like, hold my beer. We're (laughs) fucked up too. Watch this. (laughs) (laughs) You've got some news. You've got some cool news. Uh, Just very little. Um... About the upcoming, I think it's going to come out in 2021. Um, God, that's Mortal cool. Kombat remake. Uh, it's going to be rated R, and mm-hmm. it will have fatalities, which I think the two other movies or previous did not. Did not. Yeah. So eh, it's a little. And sucky. also, Joel T- Joel Tassim, uh, the the star. Joel of, is going to uh, be star of the Night Come First is going to be Sub Zero. Sub Zero. Yeah. So if they cast mostly martial artists and kung fu movie actors, I think it'll be because really the the Mortal Kombat is the star. Right. You know, you don't need a bunch of Hollywood actors. You know? No. And, uh, you know, so I'm very, that's my favorite video game of all time. You know, I, uh, I'm not a big gamer, but I love Mortal Kombat, so I'm very excited. I have I have faith in James Wan that he will uh, yeah. produce it correctly. Shooting in Australia, where he's from. I think it's going to be good. Yeah, I do too. I like hearing yeah. those couple of things about it. It gives me, yeah. Good, good, good. That's all I got. That's all. Yep. Yeah. That's all we got. What's up, though, Ricky? <laughs> okay. Well, that's it for this. You got some news? It's Deep Star Six. Gary. Deep Star Six. <laughs> Deep Star uh, Eleven D. <laughs> Eight million. <laughs> Eight million. Okay, seventy-five million. <laughs> and you, is it a pig? Or is it an alligator? <laughs> or is it a crocodile? <laughs> or is it some co- combination of all three? Is it a pig doll? <laughs> oh, no, I watch that shit. <laughs> As what I. Well, that's it for this week. Next week we'll get into uh, westerns, uh, starting with the big kill. And next week's. Uh, Next week's show will be Facebook Live. Uh, we've got the internet back at the office, so everything should be running smooth. Nice. And we're going to have, we're gonna have uh, Clint Hummel. Uh, he is a friend of mine who was in the actual movie, The Big Kill. And he's not just a part. He's no. a part. He is one of the main stars. He's he, not like, you know, just Jeb, the guy who runs the country store. Like, he's, you know, he's, he's on the poster. Yeah. yeah. He's on the poster. And he will be here with us uh, via Facebook uh, from the West Coast talking about the big kill next week should be fun and then we're going to do two movies after that we should have gone uh well due to dates and time uh we are going in in reverse we are doing the latest western first which will be the big kill with clint because that's when we can get him uh and then 
then we're going to go backwards. Uh, Appaloosa. Uh, Appaloosa is going to be the second week, and then the Grand Duel. The Grand Duel, the first week. So we're going backwards yeah. in order of time frames. That's okay. Which, yeah, yeah. It, it worked. The, it worked. It the same thing this week. Yeah. This time, yeah. yeah. And it, it it worked fine. Yeah. So there you go. So next Tuesday, live on uh, Facebook Live, uh, we will have Clint Hummel in studio via FaceTime, and uh, we will be talking westerns. So that's it for this week. Yeah. All right then. Yeah. Go away. Please listen to me. It's all over. You've got nothing to be afraid of. Why should I go on living? Have you forgotten what I am? Paco, you can become a man again. They know now that you were being used. You were normal before you ended up in that laboratory. And that you saved the best part of you. Your soul. <laughs>